Over the last three months, residents of Meru County have been treated to drama due to the spouse of the office holder and his alleged interference with county functions. This has kept Kenyans questioning on the role of the spouses to governors, bearing in mind there are legalities surrounding the office. <music> That office has been there since 1963. So you will not find it in written law. That's why you don't also find, as part of the qualifications of uh, would be office holders, uh, you know, their marital status. Do we need it? If you ask me, I don't think we need such an office. What for? We are electing you and not your spouse. You need to really demarcate and say, my, my, my spouse will do one, two, three. That is the work he will do. Meru County, County number 12, has in the recent past made the headlines all for the wrong reasons. Leadership wrangles pitting the third governor, Kawira Mwangaza, elected on an independent ticket and members of the county assembly. Three months into office, and the governor seems to have begun her leadership on the wrong foot with MCAs claiming the spouse of the governor seems to get involved more than he should in the running of county affairs and further accuse the governor of sidelining them in county development matters. His Excellency, the first gentleman. From giving him an appointment as Meru Youth Service patron to attending county meetings and allegedly giving orders to some county officials, this has not gone down well with MCAs, forcing them to write a letter to the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to intervene. Kuna mwingine hapa, akona work experience kuliko wengine wote. Na department yake, hile ambaye anapewa na serikali ya governor ni mama, hiyo department haina mshahara, huyo atakuwa akifanya kasi free, akisaidia, akiinua wanyonge na huyu atakuwa hata na allowances lakini tumepatia yeye appointment maana tunajua yeye ni muzito sana 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 na huyu muzito ni his excellency the first gentleman honorable morega baichu uh, morega baichu I have not seen him do anything which is uh, against the law, really. He's doing social work and not being paid for it. But being appointed by the wife? Yes, but uh, then uh, Priscilla Murunge was appointed by the husband. So why are we singling out Murega Baichu? That's what I don't understand. Sisi atu kuchagua buwanake, ama kuchaguliwa na wameru. Na tukona mangavana zuengi akina mama, na wakona mabwana. But unrelenting Meru County first gentleman, Murega Mbaisho, asked ESSC to enlighten him on his boundaries at the county government after he was barred from accessing county facilities. GBV. Let me advise him. Kwake, see your boardroom, ni bedroom. Umesikia? Murega, akai kandu. Watu wafanyi kazi. Governor Mwangaza says her woes are politically instigated. But what is causing the push and pull between the governor and the MCAs? Tumekutana na nyinyi Mombasa, tukaongea mambo ya Wadifad, mume niruka. Tumekutana na leadership ikiongoswa na speaker kwa ofisi yangu si mara moja mumeniruka. Tumekutana na nyinyi mashinani nikaongea mambo ya Wadifad mumeniruka. Sasa kwa sababu sitaki muniruke tena naomba mukifika tena kujeni na something that I can also present before people. Let the speaker bring the document that shows the amount of money that you want. Even if it is 200,000 Per year, or 200 million per year, I'm ready to give you provided that it is anchored in the law. Some funds are located for once, 
and, uh, and implemented by the executive, whereby the MCA goes and sits with the people and uh, comes up with a plan or the work plan, in the, in, depending on the priorities of the world. So we wanted to strike that out with the governor, but uh, she, she ignored. The same way what we are doing with CDF, if uh, the World Development Fund was legislated, uh, governors would not be offering different, different amounts all over the country. Because like uh, CDF, it's 2.5% minimum, and uh, there is no maximum. The drama between Mwangaza and the MCAs was far from over. An honor and privilege to stand before you, Honorable Speaker. During her county address at the county assembly, MCAs staged a walkout on Mwangaza, leaving her to address empty seats. Concluded campaign periods. I acknowledge that we are all here. In what has been seen as attempts to frustrate her father, the county select committee on appointments on the vetting of nominees to positions of county executive committee members rejected Governor Mwangaza's seven of the ten CEC nominees. The MCA's only approved CECs for education, public service and finance, claiming the other seven failed to have administrative knowledge affecting their departments. This Honorable Assembly rejects the nomination of Mr. George Gikunda Mungania. It is this exercise that we did as a committee of appointment where I was privileged to serve. And I can say without any fear of contradiction that we were guided by meritocracy and we vowed never to entertain a kakistocracy. However, the governor alleges that MCAs were blackmailing her through the word fund for them to approve her CEC nominees. <laughs> I will not bow to that. Sita Kubali. Hawa mawaziri ni wakaunte ya meru na watafanyia meru kazi. Kwa hivyo kama walikuwa ilikuwa ni mazoea ama ni mazoea sijui, kwangu I'm not ready to part with any amount of money for you to do what you are supposed to do. The move by the MCAs forced the embattled governor to restructure her ministries by reducing them from 10 to only 6 dockets. And now, according to Governor Mwangaza, only divine intervention will bring sanity to the county leadership. Leo nitafunga kula na kunywa. Niombe ili kama kuna mapepo. Kulingana na vile wamerusha matusi. Kulingana na vile wameturusha mawe. Kulingana na vile wameongea vibaya. Na watu wa media umechukua hiyo kuongea kwao vibaya. Inawezekana kuna mapepo ya inafurani imerushwa kwao. A reconciliation meeting organized by Mwangaza to iron out her differences with the MCAs in the presence of Meru County MPs and Senator failed to take place at her residence as parties were invited failed to show up citing busy schedules. Some legislators, however, questioned the manner in which communication about the meeting was done, claiming they first saw it on a social media platform before receiving personal invites. Through her Facebook account, Mwangaza wrote, and I quote, May I take this opportunity to invite all the honorable members of the Meru County Assembly, led by Honorable Speaker Ayub Mbodi, and all Meru members of the National Assembly, led by their chair, Honorable Mutunga Kanyuidhia, and Honorable Senator Kazuri Murungi, Deputy Speaker Senate for consultative meeting on 3rd of November 2022, at Meru Governor's official residence at 9 a.m., end of quote. I think the Deputy uh, Speaker of the Senate, uh, our Senator Kaduri, has written to the Governor, but uh, there are a few misunderstandings. I think a lot of people blow it out of proportion and then uh, feed the Governor something, feed the leader something, so at the end of the day we cannot get down to sit. Mm -hmm. But I do intend to talk to the Governor as well as talk to the Speaker of the County Assembly and the MCAs when we are on break. Mwangaza's leadership at the county was threatened in October after a resident from Meru County petitioned the County Assembly to have the county boss impeached. Celestio Duranira claimed that the governor went against the law by carrying out appointments which were not subjected to a competitive process and had not received the nod of MCAs. Meru residents say 
The leadership tussle is threatening service delivery at the county. The husband should be allocated in business, families, family business, and manage everything that family owns or family runs and leave alone the government issues. If it was a man who was doing all those things, I would tell uh, Governor Kawira, people won't care. But because you are a woman, oh my goodness me, they will look at you, they will judge you, they will say everything. So try and bring back your MCAs to work together and then just do development. The Council of Governors, through its chairperson, Anway Goro, decided to intervene by meeting Meru MCA's leadership to draft measures that would bring an end to the feud. During the meeting, a five-member committee was set up with the mandate of overseeing peace talks between Governor Mwangaza and MCA's. We have decided to give them time and uh, see how they, 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 work, they, they are planning to work it out. And, uh, and the legal structures maybe will be available to sort the issue out maybe going forward. As Governor Waiguru, attempts bringing peace in Meru County. Perhaps it is a high time the county borrowed a leave from Kirinyaga County. As a spouse, as a, as a man's spouse, unlike the, the, the women's spouses, you have to be very careful that you don't send the message to the population that this woman is incomplete without me, you know, which is why you need to be very careful about the public profile you take. Because the natural tendency, the natural assumption is that if a woman is in leadership, there is a man who is supporting them and making them complete. They would not be a complete leader unless there is a man. And we need to disabuse the population of that assumption. Kerenyaga first gentleman Kamodo Waiganjo says that the increased number of first gentlemen has attracted a lot of attention in their roles at the counties. According to the first gentleman, electorates are yet to know how to handle the role of the first gentleman because of the patriarchal society, and thus they need to be careful about the public profile they carry. It's not an office that people are familiar with. We, haven't de we hadn't developed any tradition and norms around that office. Uh, people had expectations of the first ladies because we had had that office at the national level. So in a sense, there was not much in terms of expectations because there were very few. I think now that they have increased, the reason why it's become a big issue is people don't know then how to handle this office. While spouses to office holders seem to be positioning themselves closer and closer to power, some seem to be focused on their private lives and what they have always done. I don't wake up and think what are the programs of Kirinyaga County that I need to work on. Because my core calling, you know, I have a life. I have children, I have grandchildren, I have, uh, I have uh, professional responsibilities. But my day is, uh, is a normal day like the spouse of every other person. I mean, one spouse who's a newspaper person doesn't wake up worrying about the standard or KTN. You know, you know, you wake up and you have responsibilities. So, 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 but it's an honor. I mean, I, I think one needs to be very careful not to appear for it to be a complaint. Even as debate on the role of the spouses to governors rages on, the legality of this office, both at the national and county levels, has never been questioned by oversighting institutions nor Kenyans. It is no doubt funding of these offices has been happening but through the governor's office for various programs. However, pundits warn that these are not public offices and ought not to be funded by the exchequer. The office of the first lady or the first gentleman is not provided for in our legal framework. Uh, the closest you'd come to it is uh, look at the constitution. First, Article 234 gives the responsibility of setting up or establishing and abolishing public offices in the hands of pub, uh, public service commission at the national level and the county level also there is a, pub, a county service commission a board that is supposed to set up offices so unless an office is established uh, by a public service commission uh, then it is an illegal office we are right in imagining that when they elect somebody to come and serve them they are not saying that 
you come with your entire family. In fact, they excuse the, the rest of the family, you know. Um, it's a wonder sometimes that uh, uh, when people come into political offices nowadays in Kenya, uh, it's as if uh, they had nothing to do before they came into office, you know, and that's why they don't want to leave office when their time comes up. But again, we are seeing this fashion where even their spouses, you know, uh, it's as if uh, they have to drop everything that they were doing. They didn't have lives before politics. Um, I mean, I think Kenyans imagined, you know, this office is to be like any other office. I don't imagine when teachers go to, to teach children, they carry their spouses with them to, to the classrooms, you know. It's a wonder why this is only being an issue, you know, within the political space. The first lady at the county, the first ladies at the county level are not public servants, they are not state officers, they are not public officials. Public funds cannot be directed to private citizens. Questions surrounding the legality of the first spouse's office have not started today. In 2014, the then Attorney General Gedomwegai wrote a letter to the chair of the Transition Authority, Kenudia Wamwangi, warning against calling the wives of governors first ladies. In his letter, Mwigai said, and I quote, according to section 60, subsection 1 of the Constitution, upon establishment of the office of the county public service, the office shall be vacant and that it will not fit in the definition of an office in the county public service. End of quote. However, the Goreti North Member of Parliament, Beatrice Elachi, who served as Speaker of Nairobi County, holds that counties are justified to have the first lady or gentleman. When you look at how we are running the country, we replicate so many things uh, in terms of what is the national government doing. So you'll find always the counties are looking at what the national government is doing. Yes, they have within the constitution their functions in Schedule 4. And so what the First Lady will do will be around those schedules. She cannot move to any other function. That is why most of the time, when you look at their programs, their programs are on women economic empowerment. So they look at women in the markets, women in trade. And then they will, look at, uh, they will work very closely with community health workers. And perhaps Imanti North MP Rahim Dawood seems to agree with Mwigai on who should be referred to as First Lady. There was a time when I was speaking to, uh, we are in a function where Margaret Kenyatta was there. And when I mentioned the first lady, she was wondering, who am I referring to? Uh, until I told her it was Margaret Kenyatta and not Phoebe Munya. So yes, it would be nice to have it in law, uh, properly recognized. But still, there are some spouses who don't understand the place and limit they should enjoy from the trapping of power that comes with office holder. And no one would stop her from moving around with the husband. In fact, if there are people who are complaining about her moving around with the husband, those are primitive and uh, people. They should allow Kawera to move with the husband if the husband has good ideas to offer to her. As that is what spouses are for. They complement each other, they help each other. In fact, it, the Bible says what God has brought together, no one should put asunder. So these two should be together, they should advise each other, and Meru people should not complain. But making formal appointment, appointing your spouse formally, is ridiculous. Spouses of governors have been involved in advocacy partnership and networking in communities in their region. Kisumu County First Lady Dorothy Nyong'o has been vocal about health issues, advocacy for women and girls' rights. Kajiado County First Lady Edna Lenku has been advocating for gender issues, education, and health issues, while former West Pokot Governor First Lady Dr. Mary Lonyangapuo was vocal about peace, education, and gender issues. Most of these programs by the First Ladies require funding. The funds are there. It's only that it is not written funds for First Lady. It is reinforced within the activities of the governor. Governor now will sort of break it down 
and now say this will be done in the office of the first lady. So all, that's why I'm saying it's just important to have an act that makes it, uh, that gives it a framework so that uh, it's easier. Because when the auditor comes, the auditor, it's not like uh, the, the, the office of the first lady at the national level. This one, the auditor will audit the governor's office and he will realize how resources were spent. I, I think the people of Grenyaga would know that I do not, I have not spent a shilling of their money. Um, and that is also a choice. Um, part of the reason is that uh, I, I consider that there are many other ways, if I needed to help that county, I can help without necessarily asking for budget support. Uh, I think there are ways. If I needed budget support, then I would. But at this point in the last five years, I don't believe I do. At national level, the offices of the first and second ladies, which have been termed as controversial due to their legality, are allocated funds every financial year. During the financial year 2022-2023, the office of the First Lady received 260 million shillings, while in 2021-2022, the office was allocated 271 million. In 2020-2021, the allocation was 229 million, compared to that of the Deputy First Lady, which received 242 million in the financial year. 2022-2023, 235 million was for the financial year 2021-2022. In the financial year 2020-2021, the office received cash 212 million for the smooth management of the offices. But the question is, should the same be replicated at the county level? Such imagination must be frowned upon, <laughs> discarded rejected and at the simplest way condemned it's just important to have an act that makes it uh, that gives it a framework so that uh, it's easier because when the auditor comes the auditor it's not like uh, the, the the office of the first lady at the national level this one the auditor will audit the governor's office and he will realize how resources were spent the profile that one has there are many benefits that can accrue through that profile. But how you do it, when you do it, one has to be very, very careful that you do not become the new issue in the county. If there is any expenditure, because, I mean, if you take up, say, an issue to do with the children's health, it's not that there is no Department of Health in a county. It's not that there is no Ministry of Health in, 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 the, in the country. So uh, I think the, the, the person can you know, use their uh, personality or whatever they want to bring into, 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 into the issue and topic uh, they want uh, to, you know, exploit through the relevant uh, departments or institutions and authorities that are there. If you spend money illegally or inappropriately, improper expenditure, the person who has received the money should give it back, but the person who has authorized the payment should be surcharged. So those officers, because you see, the first lady does not have access to our state coffers. Some public officers, some state officers facilitate such expenditure. They are supposed to be surcharged. It is this building where laws governing both the national and county governments are made and definitely Kenyans would expect members of parliament to use the floor of this house to come up with laws that will legitimize the offices of the first lady and the first gentleman of the counties. But this will definitely not be the case. I think the only reason why the office needs to be um, anticipated is because sometimes there are budgetary implications, you know. Um, at the county level, I'm not sure how the, the county budgets are managed. I, I haven't utilized budgets from Kirinyaka County. I don't know how other counties are managing it. But at the national level, I do know that there is a budgetary allocation to the office of the First Lady. Now the question is, if there is a budgetary allocation, what are the accountability mechanisms? Who responds to any audit issues on that issue? Or is it run purely as a program in which the minister responsible then responds? I think it's important to, to identify those issues, not to over-prescribe. Because like I said, 
first spouse is an issue of norm and tradition. And it is not unique to Kenya, it is global. I think we need to be careful not to overprescribe the office. But I think we need to anticipate it so that it doesn't appear like we are breaching public finance laws if we then fund that office and the, the mechanisms uh, for that budgetary allocation are not very clear. I think that's the only reason I'd say maybe it needs to be anticipated in the law. Personally, I don't think we need to. We need to uh, rehabilitate the constitution in any way so as to accommodate these offices. As I was saying, in fact, the offices or the role that uh, spouses play, um, it, it's, it's very much out of the imagination and creativity of the couple, you know. And also, I think it should, be, it should not be an entitlement, it should be on needs basis. The county, through the county assembly, must put in an act so that when you are influencing resources, it is, kept, it is clearly stipulated. I think that is what is not there. So what happens is that they always take, um, the governor is the one who will always give his, whatever is in his vote, he will now uh, give for the activities that are there. Those are the same activities the governor would have been doing. During the late President Daniel Moy's 24 years tenure, little was known about the office of the First Lady. The office would gain attention during the tenure of the late Mwai Kibaki, with Mama Lucy Kibaki was very vocal and in most occasion was seen as defender of the family unit. Came in Margaret Kenyatta, who will be remembered for being on the front line for health matters through a health program beyond zero campaign. This has made other county first ladies to follow suit by running several social programs. However, pundits still maintain that spouses to governors ought to continue playing a supportive role. So the closest should be maybe get involved in some charitable activities. If you can fundraise, get some donors because of your, by virtue of being the wife of the president or the wife of the governor or the wife of who, you can fundraise, get funding from some donors, money that is not from the, 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 our state coffers. You can spend it on charitable organization. You can accompany your husband to uh, state functions, no one will stop you. We'll give you a, a decent seat, you sit there. You can uh, make life comfortable for your spouse. Or if you are also a professional in your line, why don't you continue working wherever you are working? But this idea that the moment I'm elected and my wife is also elected, if that is what we want, we should pass it in law. One has to understand the dynamics of every society in which you operate. Um, there, are, there are places, and I have done some things. I mean, I did some, some work uh, on cancer, on prostate cancer, got some equipment donated, have done some work. But even when I have done, I've done it largely offline because I'd, I'm also not looking for this to raise my profile. I, I would say that one has to be wise. I think, and, and my final point on this would be, there are many um, benefits, uh, the, the profile that one has, there are many benefits that can accrue through that profile. But how you do it, when you do it, one has to be very, very careful that you do not become the new issue in the county. There are enough problems in a county without you becoming an additional issue. It is clear the question on the office of the first lady or gentleman needs to be looked at and anchored in the law since the community has accepted it. It is now a matter of how the positions need to be written in the law. Brenda Zeda Radido, K10 News.